with the 59 El Camino. And as you can see, the Elki is all painted. Um, it even has its windows in place, chrome in place. We'll put it in the camera. Um, I used Molotov uh, marking pen in places. I used a I used bare metal in places. Um, it was taking a long time to do it with the bare metal all the way around, so I used the marking pen uh, in a few spots. Mainly, um, I, I used bare metal on that piece of chrome there, and um, I used bare metal around the top of the bed. I used Molotow around the outside edge of the bed. So that's where it stands. Um, I'm now to the point of putting assembling the interior and um, the next step will be to put that in to the model. With the gear shift lever by the way I think that was painted I mean molded in uh, white so I Started out by painting it with the Molotow Chrome, and um, I don't know. Sometimes I must say that that Molotow Chrome Molotow is that how you pronounce it? Um, sometimes it gives you a really good chrome finish, and uh, sometimes it gives you a really good silver finish. I don't know why. In general, if I, I find that if you put more on, it, it makes it more chromey looking. Chromy looking, not crummy looking, crummy looking. So let's glue the gear shift lever into place and I decided to go with basic black on the interior. The dash is body colored. Not sure about that, but that's what I was, you know, I looked around on the interweb and, um, you know, most of them were Most of them were um, body color. Um, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes because there are, you know, you search for interior images of a 59 El Camino and you get vintage pictures or shall we say um, undisturbed or um, stock rebuilds and then you get custom rebuilds. And um, I'm not enough of an expert to know the difference. So go with what looks uh, the way I the way I think it is in the pictures, anyways. Sometimes you can tell. All right, why is the dash not centered? It's uh, much more to the driver's side than the passenger side. Oh, okay. It's. The opening is greater, longer than the dashboard. Okay. Um, oh, I also uh, I put mirrors on it. The model comes with a single mirror. It looks like that right there. Uh, I got a bunch of mirrors on eBay a week or so ago, and uh, put them put a couple of them on there. I'm going to go around and mirror up some of my models now that I've got a bunch of them. One thing I'm not enthused about is the fact that this tailgate doesn't completely close. There's a gap there. Gonna, it doesn't work very well. Anyways, I'm going to put that aside for the moment and I will work on last night. Ooh, throw that across the workspace. Last night I put the clear lenses in the headlights and I test fit trial
the mounting lugs, the mounting holes for the bumper are the same holes that the hinges for the tailgate use. So if you get super glue in there, tailgate doesn't work too well. I'm going to leave the tailgate down. Okay, I'm going to have to do these next. I'm going to do that over on my painting bench. I have different benches for painting and uh, decaling and for the dirty work over here. So this is the chassis and the body. As you might notice, the body and chassis are together now. It took a little bit of work last night, but I got it to go. And uh, I'll explain you what the issues were. Here it... Oh, um, red light is flashing. Stop! Well, you notice I've got those little grill pieces in the front here in place. I, I painted the... Oops. Off cam. I painted the directional lights orange and black for the grill part. Looks like I got a little bit of grill on the chrome. chrome blah, a little bit of black on the chrome. Um, I'll scrape that off my finger now. Uh, all I used was some uh, acrylic primer. So the issues with putting the body together was the main issue. The engine was set back about that far too much. Uh, what's that, an eighth of an inch uh, or so? You see the white uh, piece of plastic I put on the drive shaft. So I had to move the engine forward. I had to break the engine out of its glue, uh, move it forward, and then, of course, I had to splice in the exhaust sections and um, glue the engine in place. So what that was preventing me from doing was moving the body of the chassis back and uh, now it's back and I have glued them together. I had, to, I had this side clamped in because it kept popping out while the glue was drying. Hopefully it's holding. I think it is. I'm just squeezing a little bit to see. I think I still have problems as you notice. I don't know if you can see that. The hood isn't sitting quite right. So I think the engine is sitting up a little bit too high. And um, so I'm going to do a little test on that. I think what I'll do if it's a problem is, well, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to put a little bit of a drop of glue on top of the air cleaner, and it's probably that front edge of it, and then I will um, close the hood down and so see where the. So the Camino is pretty much done now. It has all the pieces and parts assembled. One thing I haven't added is the radio antenna. Let's see if the little, yep, little daub on the end is done. So, that's the radio antenna to show up. The, um, I'll put that on just a second. Take a look at the car. You see a slight difference in color between the hood and the car. I had to repaint the hood. I really wasn't happy with the finish on it. And um, so I repainted it. And as you can tell, it came out really, really glossy and much glossier than the car. I'm going to put a coat of, at least one coat of Pledge on there and see if that'll bring up the color a little bit better, the shiny, the glossiness. So there she be. Now, pretty good fit on the hood. Not too bad. There's a little bit of rockiness to it, but there's the engine. And I wish I could get a light over there. I should turn this light off. It never goes well. That light never works well with this camera. So there's the engine. And I'll show you the underside. I touched up the exhaust. Right up here, the uh, splices that I put in the exhaust. I think that's the best it's going to be. I tried to fix it. There's a, quite a 
jump in the pipe right there. And uh, I thought I pushed that back. Oh, it's just mushing the, the tube. <laughs> so if I push on it, it just mushes the tube, the plastic tubing. So there it be, is the end of frame. I don't know, I, I might put a little weathering on there. Uh, I think that would dress it up a lot. But it doesn't look bad the way it is. So we'll see. Now, the antenna. Last step. Finishing it up. This is going to be hard for me to do with that light off. I need a drop of super glue. And what I use for antennas is guitar strings. I play guitar when I'm not modeling. And uh, so I keep a few pieces of guitar strings when I change them. And I don't know if you can see them. No, they're not on the, they're not in the viewfinder. Come on. The one disadvantage, the, the nice thing about guitar strings is that they have a nice silver finish if I use electric guitar strings. And so they look like they're a chrome there we go, antenna. The difficult thing is that they are really hard steel. And so, oh, you know what? I just noticed something I forgot. Um, anyways, so they're really hard to, to cut. And I have to use special wire cutters to cut them. You know what? I think that's going to need to be chopped, trimmed. Maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. A little bit more. A little bit more. Come on. <laughs> I guess that's it. All right. That appears to be nice and solid. I just noticed one more thing on the workbench. Um, oh, guitar strings. There's some of my guitar strings. I just keep a bunch of them laying around on the workbench on the back. And one more. So obviously, obviously the wound strings won't be used for radio antenna, but they might be good for something else. So I keep them around. So there's the engine compartment with the hood off. I got a little LED light on there, shine on there. So one of the things I'm noticing now after doing, um, this is probably the 10 or 12th model that I've built as an adult. One of the most time consuming, well, the most, the single most time consuming part about building a model like this is getting the finish correct um it seemed the chassis and and engine assembly and things like that that takes a few hours uh but painting it and getting the paint to come out, come out correctly uh masking the interior work masking the interior if you're going to do different colors in the interior all that takes thought planning and execution um and the execution takes a lot of time so uh just a thought something i'm noticing now after doing a, a few and uh my next project well i'm still working on a logging truck and uh, two logging trucks actually um, but i have the 58 impala that uh, is right over there on my to-do pile and um that's going to be started well i was just working on it a few minutes ago before i turned on the camera Here's the 59 El Camino, all completed. I'm 
not sure if that's an actual prototype color scheme or not. I was after a blue green color, not really that one. I was just mixing different color paints. I was after a oh, I can't remember what the color is called, but a prototype Chevy color that's uh, like Blue Lagoon or something like that. Which to me looked like a cross between the turquoise and metallic blue. So kind of a metallic blue-green color. So I custom mixed some testers enamels. At this point I don't remember what colors I, I used. But I got a metal flake finish to it. And uh, yeah, I like it. I hope you do too. Thank you again for viewing my video and I hope it was helpful to you in your modeling. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave those down below too. And if you really like my, my videos, and if you really like my videos, please subscribe. Good luck with all your modeling in the future. Bye now.